From Rochester, New York, the home of Nighthawks Lacrosse, the Rochester Philharmonic, and Marge's Lakeside Inn, this is FC3 Monkey Business, your one-stop shop for everything geeky. And since everything's geeky, if you love it enough, you never know what you're going to get. Starring Chris, Tanya, and Billy, and here's your host, Chris Frank. Greetings, Earthlings. You sound tired. I am a little tired. I was up late last night. Well, we were exhausted from Maker Fair yesterday. Well, we did have that, but it was well, all, it was an exciting evening for me too, because uh, while I was putting around late last night on my uh, on my home computer in my happy little the office, snowblower was going down the street. Uh, my snowblower was apparently going down the street. Somebody broke into my neighbor's uh, garage and and ganked it. Really? Yep. And what's irritating me is oh, that that's awful. I was awake, and you have to go right underneath the window of my home office for me to for free to get down that driveway. Now. <clears throat> Excuse me. The upside is, two of my neighbors saw this happening, stopped the guy. He ran. The guy ran off, and they were able to recover said snowblower and call police. Okay. So a bunch of people showed up, and I did. But the thing that's irritating me is, I didn't know about it until the police had shown up and were wandering around in my backyard, setting off all the motion sensor lights. That finally, I decided to notice to uh, investigate. Yeah. Hey, I wonder and what's going Juno on. Didn't decide. Juno was under my feet, under under my desk, like she normally is, and she was out cold because she'd been running her brains out because Ian was Ian's been home this weekend. Mm-hmm. So he's been, you know, taking her for walks and letting her run around and whatnot. So it must, I mean, seriously, it was like, I remember taking the trash out at like quarter to 11 and the police were there at 1130. So I must have just missed this guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, all's well that ends well. I got it back. But then the icing on the cake is until we figured out how to secure my neighbor's garage again, we put the snowblower back in my garage because I've got the automatic, you know, door open that that locks. It's such a big creature the snowblower, that I was trying to maneuver the Murano, and what did I do? Did you I him shoved him? the passenger door into the door into the garage door frame, so I've crushed the passenger door oh. of the Murano, and I almost tore apart the entire door frame of the garage. Oops. Because I was just tired and frustrated and, and not paying attention. Mm-hmm. So, you know, luckily my garage is intact, but my car is just showing me that it's 12 years old and has had enough of me. It needs to be taken care of with the Thorminator. Yeah, seriously, the <laughs> Thorminator would have been perfect for it. <laughs> The Thorminator is a 55-pound hammer. Hammer with L- with a thousand LED lights that we saw at the Maker's Fair yesterday. Oh, okay. I was I was gonna ask. I thought maybe the, I'm just the, too dumb to know. And the you're, guy who invented it. You're more it. literate than me, and <laughs> I gotta pretend I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> this guy Joel had invented it or create or built it, uh, and he said it took him a couple of months to really do it right. And he's been taking it around to do demonstrations. For, for kids you know, to get them involved and get them psyched about inventing and creating and building things. Uh, so I, I This guy, Joel, just struck me as like the ultimate coolest shop teacher ever, mm-hmm. right? Cool. He was just, just a great guy. So he came with a Viking helmet, but instead of wearing it with the horns on the side of his head, the he horns were in the front and the back. Front and the back, yeah. Right? And he had this big old cool uh, sweatshirt, and he was just going around being obnoxiously entertaining. So he was just a really cool guy to meet. Um, he was on the unicorn with it. Yes, there was this huge unicorn that was lit up by LED lights. So here's Joel on the back of this massive unicorn holding up the Thorminator, which is, like I said, it's 55 pounds. This thing was heavy. I had a hard time getting off the table because I'm just a weak little nerd. But, man, oh, man, this was a funny thing. Um, so yeah, and, and I dare any listener to use the sentence, the guy was riding a unicorn, unicorn with the Thorminator. With the Thorminator. Seriously. That's, no one's ever going to say that That's ever a George again. Carlin moment, isn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Here's a sentence you never thought you'd ever hear in the human history. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to take the Thorminator to, or the Thorminator to, uh, to the Murano wow. and just be done with it. Put it out of its misery. Yeah. Uh, just It's like, oh, my God, just another thing to think about. Plus, you were up late. You had that happen. I'm sure mm-hmm. the adrenaline was going through you yeah, after that. Yeah, irritated so, as hell. What time did you wind up going to sleep about last night? About 1.30. Yeah, that's about what time I went to bed. I went to a concert last night. When I got home, I showered, and I wanted to watch some TV, and I wound up watching a wrestling pay-per-view that mm-hmm. was on. And strangely enough, usually wrestling puts me to sleep. <laughs> and so I thought I'd be <laughs> good. There's a comment there. <laughs> But I mean, really, I enjoy it, but I could watch a baseball game and my, stay awake for the whole thing. Here's a picture. Of oh, the that's cool. The Thorminator's cool. But wrestling, I, I I'll wind up dozing off during. But I didn't last night. Wound up staying up till one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. What Here. band did you go see play? A band called Dust Bowl Revival. They're I've out heard of, of them. They're out of L. A. They played the Jazz Fest a couple years ago. It's where I first saw them. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. This is the Armored Batman. <laughs> Outfit costume that That's nice. play, that won uh, the advanced category yesterday. That's people are way more creative than me. 
So they're sort of it's a amazing. country Americana soul rock folk okay. band out of L.A. And Dust Susan, Bowl, I, say it again, Dust Bowl. Dust Bowl Revival. Revival. Okay. And uh, we enjoy them, and it, they were at Nazareth Arts Center last night. So, Or as of this recording last as night. As of this recording. I don't know when you're listening to this. Yeah. We, we are recording on the 24th. Yeah. People so. may be listening to this podcast mm-hmm. in the year 2093. Ooh. And they'll definitely know. What's, I'm definitely, definitely dead. <laughs> I, let's see. In 2093, I will be 123 years old. Yeah. And I'm older than that. So. I'll be around. Yeah. I'll be around. Okay. Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, In an urn? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. No. Don't say things like that. Modern medicine. That's so nice. Don't Mod- hurt me like modern that. Modern medicine. <laughs> We're all going to be heads in jars. <laughs> oh, could be. I'll be a good looking head. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh. Anyway. But how are you doing, T? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm as you said, we're recording this on a Sunday and I'm um exhausted from walking the convention center yesterday. And I just like forgot how many stairs. It was there nice to are. see the old stomping ground. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the building still has a lot of issues and the people who manage it still have a lot of really archaic ways of looking <sighs> at what things. What was frustrating yesterday is I came in from the South Ave garage. I came across the um, causeway, uh, window, walkway came in there, and then they said the elevator that goes from the the garage level to the first floor level was out of order. Oh Jesus! And I had a rolling cart with all the materials for oh. yesterday. I'm like, yeah. <sighs> well, South so, Ave Garage is in shambles at the moment. Oh, the, the, the renovations so, going on. It, it's it's been it, two and a half, three years. They started that freaking renovation. They were doing some of that renovation when we were down at the convention center yeah. so many years ago. Yeah. But I want to thank, I don't even know who they were, but thank you to a uh, uh, gracious um, man and woman that one took one bag and one took a box so mm-hmm. they could carry it down to the first floor for me because Ann's not allowed to carry anything right. that's heavy. So otherwise I would have been up and down the escalators three times. But, so thank you too. What's our takeaway from this conversation? We're, we're both ta- we've, we've both we're talked exhausted. about something frustrating and exhausting. But however, I have a couple of people who were not known to me. That helped me out. You have a couple of people mm-hmm. who were not known to you that helped you out. So, you know, a little faith in humanity. A little faith in humanity. So I, I am very grateful, and I, I thank them. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. very appreciative. So, you know, we had these frustrating things, but, we, you know, it, it worked out in the end. Oh, my God. And then yesterday, just making the the day of some people. Right. Like, like that, the, the little girl, little girl with, with, the, the, with wind. the judge's choice. Yeah. The, the lupus, the Wendigo. So let's tell Billy. Yeah, yeah. Because tell me about um, this. We, had the, we, we were there. We were at Maker's Fair yesterday because the folks that run it asked us to come and help with the cosplay component. They'd never done cosplay before. Can I ask what Maker's Fair is? Just to, Maker's is Fair is like a Comic-Con, Comic-Con for people who build things. STEM. It's, it's STEM and STEAM type thing. Okay. It's the science, yeah. technology, engineering, math type thing. They, anything that would ma- have you build something and craft something and create <laughs> something. I mean, there was... They were doing a lot of the wood graved laser stuff, and they were doing mm. a lot of three D printing there. They okay. had um, the Lego maker people there, like the Lego thing. So it's sort of an artisan Comic Con. It's it's you know what it's like it's a Comic Con for the without the mad comics, scientists. And, yeah, yeah, right. It, it, without actual vendors, yeah. I think there was a couple of people vendors. just selling things. I mean, there but... was there was a person that was do, that made homemade jewelry out mm-hmm. of metal. There was. Um, a person that had jewelry made out of like circuit boards mm-hmm. from yeah. things that were resin and it's circuit nerds boards. with creative talent, exactly. no Power Rangers, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, which made it that much more appealing. But anyway, um, sorry, Jason, um, <laughs> but uh, Chris is not a huge. Uh, I well, I have my reasons. You know, here's the thing. Let me say that while we're on this tangent, <laughs> let me say while we're on this tangent, let me yeah. say this. Let me say this because I was just thinking about this the other day. Okay. I am not a fan of the TV show Power Rangers. Well, you're a fan of the I'm a fan people. of the actors who've played the oh, Power Rangers. Oh, sure. Every actor who's played a Power Ranger that I have met so far has been so absolutely champion. And I lo- I follow a lot of them on Instagram. And a couple mm-hmm. of them are starting to like become friends of ours. Uh-huh. Like Karen Ashley, for instance. Mm-hmm. It, you know, we, the, she plays Candy Crush. She's we're not, she shows we're up starting, like starting to Crush. comment on each other's posts that are not involving Comic-Con type right. stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, they've mm-hmm. become a family and friends and things like and, that. And so and I, while I have, you haven't like gotten no love into for the, the show. show, and I feel I find the show and honestly some of its some of its fans a little pushy. However, 
I love they the have people such who a community. They do. They have a huge and it, very powerful community. It, I got to respect that, that. And that's the you thing. Gotta it's like that. community and strength. And mm-hmm. a lot of them are, they're so phenomenal that they give back to the community. And right. they, and, they and, and, and seeing just how much the show has changed their lives. Because, for instance, Catherine Sutherland, mm-hmm. who played the, the second Pink Power Ranger, mm-hmm. and Nakia Burris, yes. who took over for Karen as yes. Yellow Ranger. The two of them have become diehard, dyed in the wool best friends, mm-hmm. and it's fun to watch them and their antics together on Instagram as it's unfolding. Oh. Like whenever they see each other, they're like, you know, it's like a pair of sisters that haven't seen each other in a while, so they mm-hmm. do, they're catching. And then this, shen- I think they would give Michael and, and Greg, Greg a run, run for their money. Mm. I really do. You know, what? I saw an Instagram po- post. Sorry, mm-hmm. I've got a the shenanigators. I've got a Milky Way that I'm chewing on. Uh huh. Mm, I gotta tell you, they're my favorite. We're we're killing off the excess uh, Halloween candy still. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank you, Tanya, for the white Kit Kats. Mm-hmm. There you go. The the shenanigans and stuff between Nakia Baris and Jason Font. They have been in each other's costumes. Oh, really? There is a um, Instagram post of some convention that they were both at. They were at the hotel in the hallway or somewhere. Nakia has the red <laughs> ranger outfit on, and Jason has Nakia's yellow ranger outfit on, and That's they're funny. like both tossing their hair back and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it is hysterical to watch. See, and that's and, so and that's can, the thing. They have that. fun. And and that's that's what we love. But anyway, to circle back all the way around to because we because we started telling a story. Oh yes, about yeah. about the about, cosplay about contest. About the cosplay, and then you're asking this, about uh-huh. it. Wow, and, I'm telling you, hurting sorry. cats, man, yeah. hurting cats. Well, we got back on track. Um, well, we well, did. I, I wanted to know what you guys were talking about. Yeah. Yes. For and Maker so, Fair. So we were at Maker's Fair, and our job was to oversee their first ever cosplay contest. And we only had about seven or eight entrants, but they were they were all having a good time. Um, so we, we split it up into novice and advanced. The advanced had three entries, uh, you know, older, you know, young adults and adults. Right. Uh, one of them was the Thorminator, who we were talking about a moment ago. So it was either costume or prop that was crafted yes okay. it, was, it was specifically most of the the uh, the entry had to be crafted you could have some pieces that were store-bought bought mm-hmm. or whatever but it had to been have crafted but by something somebody. yeah something had to be fabricated by you or so so at the kid something. level we mm-hmm. had these two the two brother and sister the you know, the two kids that did these taylor and bryce taylor and bryce who did their outfits after video game characters hollow knight Ho- the Hollow Knight video game? I don't know what it is, I've but never I, heard had, of it I had to look it up so I could see yeah. how... But Dad helped him build the headdress. and The head pieces were amazing. They were pretty cool. So we gave best in novice class to one of the siblings mm-hmm. as a recognition mm-hmm. of the effort that they put into their outfits. Uh, and then there was this young girl, Mary, and I want to tell you a little bit more about Mary's story. Because Mary, I did, I've never seen her face because she had her mask on the entire time mm-hmm. uh, that I saw her. But... From what I'm being told by Chrissy Harding and a couple of our others, Brian emceed everything. You know, she, this poor girl, she had her her mask, which was kind of like a, a wolf skull with antlers, and then she had a cape, and she had this whole look like a Kuchuma outfit kind of on. And so the entire time, she was so nervous. She's like, she saw a couple of the other costumes. She's like, my st- my work sucks. I'm terrible. Oh, this is terrible. I don't know why I'm doing this. I should just go, you know, I should just walk away. And everybody's like, no, honey, go, go do She had to be like 11, 12 years old figure. Mm-hmm. So the entire time, they're, you know, Chrissy's like encouraging her. Brian's encouraging her. And she gets up and she does her thing. And, you know, and the contest goes on. So when it gets to be the point of judging, I'd never judged a cosplay contest before. Me neither. So we were kind of like. We we're doing our own debating. But then I decided I wanted to go and talk to the people who were. And there was only seven of them. So I figured I wasn't mm-hmm. going to be wasting too much time. I went over and talked to the guy who was dressed in the full armored Batman from Man vers- uh, from Batman versus Superman. Uh-huh. Right? You saw oh, the yeah, picture yeah, of that. Sure. I talked to a couple of other folks. Our friend Robin yeah. uh, had shown up in medieval garb, so I asked her about the outfit a little bit. I asked uh, you know this Taylor and mm-hmm. Bryce about their Hollow Knight outfits, and then I talked to this this young lady, Mary. And I said, Mary, I have one question for you, sweetie. I said, is this an original character or is this based on something? She goes, no, no, this is an original character. I created it in class. I said, okay, thank you. And I asked her a little bit about the mask. Mm-hmm. Her brother had helped her, you know, construct it. It, it was, like, made out of leather, but mm-hmm. she did the painting, stuff like that. I'm like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So we had three awards to give, best advanced, best novice, and then judge's favorite. I automatically pitched for Mary to get judge's mm-hmm. favorite. So she won that. Good. And she was not expecting it. Right. And we hadn't 
a clue about how she was feeling before yep. none, none the None of us contest. knew that she and was myself, having all these. So and then, myself and Chris had no clue that she was. This wasn't a let's make Mary feel no, better. No, about this wasn't that whatsoever. No, I, as soon as, because I did not know that she was having all this trepidation beforehand, not until afterwards did Chrissy and Brian tell me about it. But, you know, when I, I was sold the moment I said, I asked her if this was original character, if it was based on something. The moment she said it was an original character, I was sold. I was done. I was mm-hmm. right. This is my favorite right now. And I took that back to the judges, and we all agreed, and, you know, great. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to Chrissy and, and Brian about it, and they're telling me. We're like, you know, oh, my God. Yeah, and we're like, oh, wow. So we just made her day. And then uh, were you you were with me, yes, Tony. We, we went were and talking we... to the mom and, the, and dad, yeah. and we were asking her about the costume because mm-hmm. the daughter was there, and, yes, she likes D&D, and Chris is like, oh, she is a DM and well, no, making no. and thing. We were ta- we she was were... talking about how she created the two different characters in right. class. And she was sketching stuff. Lupus the Wendigo. Yeah, and then, and then something the wolf. Some, something the other the Wendigo yeah. because they had diamonds so, on the head that yeah. she said she screwed up the character. She was so, so excited and so into it. I looked at Tanya. I said, a future DM here. And the mother lit up. She goes, oh, yes. Oh, no. And suddenly now we're all talking about playing D&D together. And we're like, oh, my God. So this poor little girl went from like the pit of despair where she thought she was just going to get steamrolled to now she's best in class. Yeah. And she has no idea what to do with herself. And I'm and like, she's no, going to be in Tanya's basement this afternoon playing Dungeons and <laughs> Dragons. There you Dragons. go. I said, just keep creating. I told her, so just keep creating, honey. I said, yes. you're great. You're great. Just keep creating. And 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 we let them know about Minicon. They're like, oh mm-hmm. my god. And what really touched my heart afterwards, which we didn't know, is that her uncle had um, crafted the cape that she was wearing. She was wearing it in um, um, inside out, like she had a, the purple side out, and the inside was. Um, like a pattern fabric with like creatures or something on it, and it, it was and it was like fleecy on the outside, and it was like oh really soft. Um, her uncle had crafted that for her as part of this costume or cosplay, and he passed away in March. Aww. So that that yeah. was the other thing, and then the mom yeah. was starting to tear up, and she's like, "Oh my god, you guys are made her." Day. Oh, that's that's awesome, and that's oh. so that's that's why we do these things, though, mm-hmm. yeah. isn't it? I mean, so. that's why we put on our show. That's why we, we involve ourselves with them to help these people mm-hmm. to to help everybody have that kind of a moment. And, and the know? kid that did um, the Mandalorian outfit, he three D the three D printed three D printed the helmet and the gun. The gun? I thought the gun was no. A, the a gun was three D printed. That's amazing. I didn't know that until Chrissy told me that later. I I the detail on the gun. Had I, I thought, known that that was, I thought he had bought the gun. I, me too. If he had told me, if I had somebody told me that he had three D printed that sucker, I would have. I probably would have. And painted it or whatever yeah. and things like that. I would have had a much it, tougher it time. Was, it was a gun probably as long as my arms. Huh. That was allegedly three D printed, as far as I know. Wow. So, but the helmet was three D printed. People are, and are, are, and he was uh, awarded um, uh, grant from Awesome Foundation, which is uh, um foundation here in rochester so the fact we didn't give an award doesn't bother me because i know he he, he scored he, huge he, he scored huge um they give out mini grants in order to how do you make rochester awesome that that's what this whole thing is and um his was let me read it because i found the picture yesterday on facebook last night it said so excited to share that our booth, Make Your Fair Rochester, did a contest asking for ideas to spread awesomeness in Rochester. We had great ideas from lots of creative people. But in the end, they awarded this mini grant to Feroz Ali. He plans to print a 3D full-size Star Wars droid and donate it to a children's hospital. That's amazing. Oh, that's cool. So there's that no doubt amazing. in my mind that he'll do just that. And looking at it, and I'm just like, wait, I think that was the kid that was the Mandalorian in mm-hmm. our contest. And sure mm-hmm. enough, Christy's like, yeah, it was. So, Good it, deal. So you guys had a busy Saturday. We, <laughs> we did. did. We very much so. We did. And speaking of Mandalorian, I spent it yesterday watching Disney+. Plus. <laughs> I'm telling you, I am having I so much fun. I need somebody's Disney Plus login. <laughs> I, I thought I'd give it to you already. No, I don't have Disney Plus yet from you. All I right. have CBS All Access. I'll take care of that. Okay. When we get back to your house. One of my kids' students I'm not, are like... I'm not dying today, though, right? I, I, I might, it's the last session. I might break Come the on. rest of the party. Do you have to leave for any... any? I hope not. 
You don't have to leave my house for any length of time. Because oh, every not. time that Chris is gone uh-huh. from the gaming table, oh. I break the rest of the party. Like I killed our friend Sean twice in oh. one can- uh, one day. Well, Robin helped with the second one because she revived him, but didn't remove the person. Because I was at the, the table. Per- poison, yeah. So this and is why I can't be party killed, leader because when I'm not there, everything killed, goes hell. I hell killed hand Robin basket. and then mm-hmm. I killed Scott and I really mm-hmm. killed Scott. There was no coming back from that. So then two weeks ago, Chris had to go get Juliana from work and take her home. Mm-hmm. And that was a whole other debacle type thing. And all of a sudden, I uh, drop a monster on Sean that suffocates him. And I'm like, oh, I dropped a lurker above on Sean. And Chris, we get a text message. He goes, stop breaking my party when I'm not there. <laughs> oh, you creative, wacky people. <laughs> I'm telling you. We're mental. Meanwhile, it's, uh, we're you, fun to be mental. Huh. Hey, what? You, you guys don't have Ver- Verizon Unlimited or whatever. No, yeah. Ian was telling me about that yesterday. Yeah. I don't yeah. have the Unlimited. Brother, Brother Weez does, and he has no use for Disney Plus, so he used his thing to get me uh, your subscription. There you nice. Go. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I've been enjoying it. Yeah, um, I haven't. And there's like too much. I I can't. There's, there's a lot on it. There's yeah. too much. I I like. I'll never be able to watch all this. I'll need another year. I think well, Sean hmm? was it. You or Sean talking about the Imagineer type thing? Me. I think you you. Yesterday. Yeah, I was watching the series about Imagineering. They're they're starting a whole documentary and they're releasing one episode a week. Three episodes are out right now, and it's effectively about the history of of the Imagineers the and the people parks. behind the parks. Yeah, right. Uh, so the first one was talking about Walt's vision and, and the creation of, of Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And then the second one kind of gets into the Disney transition World. from Disneyland into Disney World. And then uh, a whole large section about, you know, Walt's passing and then the passing of the torch to his brother Roy and Roy finishing Disney World mm-hmm. and then dying like a year later. And then you had these two protégés step in. I can't remember the gentleman's names that took over. Eisner? No. no, Eisner was the next batch eisner and this frank wells uh were after these two other gentlemen and i i I feel bad disney plus is doing something interesting with their original programming though they're trying to unprogram the binge watch mentality exactly yeah yeah mandalorian episodes every week yeah once the new marvel shows start uh wandavision and loki and all those those slow things down a little bit yeah yeah well it has its it has both both ways have Positives and negatives. Right. I mean, with the older stuff, you want to kind of get through it. Yeah. With newer stuff, it kind of keeps you coming back for more. Yep. You know, it also preserves subscriptions. Mm hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, well, you know, what did I do with my cable subscription? The moment that um, Game of Thrones came out. Mm hmm. Oh, I'm getting a call. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I can, that can go to voicemail. Um, the moment Game of Thrones came, it came out, it was once a week. But as soon as it was done, what did half a billion people do? Canceled it. Canceled HBO right off the bat. Mm-hmm. So you know, if you, you string them along, you always give them something to, to come back for. Then they're going to keep they're going to keep watching. Meanwhile, I've been watching the Spider Man cartoons from the nineties, the ones that used to run on Fox. <laughs> nice nineties. The oh, they're so good. But uh, let's see, Disney Plus, Maker's Mark or Maker's, Maker's Fair, Maker's Mark, Maker's Mark is an alcohol. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I don't know. We could have used some of that uh, over the last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week. Yes, it has. And uh, later in the program, we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yay. Which is coming oh, up. Oh, wait. Is that what we're supposed to be? Is that our topic? Yes. <laughs> but you know what? It was a, a nice thing that we talked about. Like the, the, or we the don't have to. We could just keep doing whatever we short, want. This was the little the, short we, we piece. Used, that we did we, the short piece before the break today. Yeah, and, That was and, fine. Yeah. We're, we have no format. We're like Disney Plus. We can do whatever we, we want. want. We're FC3 Plus. I've, I see that. <laughs> wow. There's an idea. Actually, that's not bad. We have our own streaming service. Oh, boy. Coming soon to Twitch. Um, you can watch you Chris and Tanya play. Yet? No. Watch Chris and Tanya play Dungeons and Dragons. You can. Oh. I've done the list of things to do, actually. You can adopt cats. You can. Oh, my God. Are you guys fostering enough? Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I hear the little white kitty has a, a forever home. Yes, yes, and it's she not does. with you guys. Yeah, I, I, you know, thank God it does because she's adorable. Yeah. But if you look at my Facebook page or my wife Susan's, for the last couple weeks we've been fostering a little white kitten, just tiny. Does uh, it have a name yet? 
We didn't name it. Little for White that. Kitty. It's Little White Kitty. Susan wanted to name it uh, Pete Alonzo after the Mets first baseman. Oh, okay. Whose nickname I was thinking is like Snowball Bear. or something. Yeah. But so Susan got a phone call a couple weeks ago from one of her rescue people Groups, that yeah, she met her, yeah. th- through the hoarder situation mm-hmm. last summer and said, there's this, the, the mom cat has been hit and one of the siblings, I got this, I trapped this little white kitten. What do we want to do with it? Susan said, I'll come get it. We'll, we'll foster it here. We gave it, she took it to the vet, gave it a bath. We had it in our, uh, our, we had in your our t-shirt room. room. Yeah. Is that where your t-shirt room is? Well, not anymore. Not anymore. But that's where it was. So we had this little white kitten and it's just adorable. And you saw all the videos. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're beautiful. Was she playing with Dora underneath the door? Yeah. That yeah. was one thing. Just with us and <laughs> eating and running around. And she was just a ball. And so, so are we going to keep this one too? Because we didn't know where because we have the two girls upstairs who are no, they're Was it Precious uh, up there. and Dora. Precious and Dora, both like 13, 14 years old. Mm-hmm. So they're old and grumpy and don't want to deal with a, you know, a three month old kitten or two, whatever it was. And the boys downstairs are playful, but they're huge compared to mm-hmm. her. They get, we don't know how they'd react to one another. Mm-hmm. And there'd be way too many places down there for her to hide. We'd have to kitten proof the whole house because <laughs> she'd get in the places we wouldn't want her if we took her down there. So we didn't know what, so Susan arranged for this uh, um, organization called Pets Pride to take her. They have a mm-hmm. really nice facility out in Vic- Victor. Okay. And uh, based on Susan's pictures and videos and stuff, there was someone, uh, there was a few people that wanted her right away. So there's going to be a man adopting her On this Wednesday. coming Wednesday. Wednesday. The little kitten gets her combo test where they check for uh, FIV and FVLV mm-hmm. or whatever the letters are. <laughs> and uh, once she passes those, which we think she will because she seems very healthy, mm-hmm. uh, she's going to go with this man who um, has a couple other cats and has been very highly thought of by the people of Pets Pride. Okay. So. We're happy about that because we'll we, have a good home. We wanted her, you know. We, we oh, you she's guys, so beautiful. You guys were like ready to keep yeah. her. Yeah, but she, but when we took her to Pets Pride Friday, mm-hmm. there's more kittens, and there, Are there's you a fostering couple. Fostering two more, two more. Mitch and Molly. They do have names because they were given names there, mm-hmm. and the, right now they can't be with. Like they were in a cage and couldn't socialize with the other cats. The other cats are just everywhere. They run mm-hmm. around and. They have places they can be, but these two, along with some others, have various ailments that they try and keep them separated. Mm-hmm. They got some sort of respiratory thing that we're okay. giving them medicine for. Nothing bad, but you know, this way they can be in our kitty room now, formerly mm-hmm. the t-shirt room, and it's play. The, the There's a cat foster, tree and toys. Foster room. Yeah. yeah, so they're they're here with us, and they they're not as attached to me and Susan as yet. little white kitty was yet. yet. But they, they're playful and they like us. So now we have seven in our house. <laughs> the five we own, or no, that are part of our family. And then no, the, the two five foster. that own you. Yeah, the five that own us. <laughs> let, let, let's get that straight. The and, five that own you. And the two little kittens in the foster room. Wow. So the little white one is at Pride's Plus Yeah, now? Pet Pride. Pet, pet Pride or whatever. And she's and... going to go home. She gets combo tested Wednesday and then I think goes home with the man that's daddy. adopting her. Yeah. Aww. Which I, I kept worrying when we left. The little like, white kid. She'll miss us. Does she think we don't want her and we're leaving her? Uh, oh, it's, I was, that's hard. It made me feel bad. Oh, God. No, she's there in a cage. Looking <laughs> at you forlornly like, why Wait, did you why leave? was it your house? I was playing with you. Where are you going? Yeah. Come back. Uh, and, oh, we, we are I, very I, good at uh, ascribing an overabundance of emotion to things that probably are not feeling that which we are <laughs> ascribing. I, the I, ho- of I hope she doesn't like us as much as we liked her. Yeah, mm. I get it. Because it made me it. sad, but. That's no, it. So now I, we have. I, I just more. love the videos that Susan's yeah. posting, and she's. I'm like, how does she get any work done during the day I or don't whatever? Know. Because well, the, she's posting videos of cute kittens. She does that I, during the morning. She does her visitations in the morning when I first go to work, and mm-hmm. then when I get home, I spend a couple, the three hours. <laughs> Especially with the white kitty, the two new kittens don't seem to care as much if I'm around or if she's around. 
they entertain each other and they got well, yeah because the, yeah. yeah cuz they they can um play with each and other they, and so. they they do play with each other they're fun to watch and they sleep more than little white kitten does mm. little white and kitten just was a ball of energy yeah, so she was like she liked to bite your feet. Yeah, and fingers. And mm. <laughs> it sounds like Athena. Uh, Athena oh, yeah? the other day. I haven't met Athena yet. No, you'll Sean's meet Athena puppy. today. Um, uh, oh, he'll have her uh, with him? Yes. Ma- um, he normally takes her to his mom's on Sunday when we're gaming and mom um, uh, pet sits, puppy sits. Mm-hmm. But mom has like a funeral or calling hours to do, so mm-hmm. Sean's bringing Athena to our house first until mom gets home, and then he'll run her over there. So you will be able to see the little gray. I can bring Juno. Bundle of joy. Um, June, there's way too many things in our basement that Juno can get into. At least Athena snuggled up on my lap the other night mm-hmm. and passed out. I had her in my sweatshirt, nose on one side, mm. butt on the other, and I zipped up my sweatshirt and I carried her in like a little baby snuggly. Type yeah, thing. Juno's not much for snuggling. She'll no. she'll lean against you. She likes hugs. She'll kiss you. She'll, she'll crawl on you. She'll crawl over and then she runs away and, and then or she'll, she'll go, hide at the other end of the couch. Then she'll come back again to yeah. crawl over you. She's just a ball of energy. Yeah, she is a fluffy ball. Of oh energy. my gosh, good lord! So. Well, let's take a break. Okay, and when we come back, <laughs> okay, it's it's our favorite. Uh, well, my favorite holiday of the the seasons of uh, of all Thanksgiving's like, yeah, around like the corner. The so I, you don't even pay attention to the parade anymore. But we'll talk about all that. Okay. Thanksgiving next, as long as we'll do that. Comedian Ted Alexandro wants to talk about Thanksgiving. Nice. As long as soon as they turn that up. There we go. I remember last Thanksgiving, I go over to my mom and dad's for traditional Thanksgiving dinner, and my mom orders Boston Market. <laughs> you believe that? Boston Market. But she served it in her own china. <laughs> right? So the guests wouldn't know. But my brothers and sisters and I would drop subtle hints. We'd be like, so Ma, do we get two sides with the turkey? Is it two or is it just the cornbread? What's the policy? She was like, just take what you want and pass it. I was like, you know, can I see your manager? Because I really don't like your attitude at all. You know, I've been eating here a long time, right? That's just wrong. That's that's freaking hilarious, actually. <laughs> well, I can honestly say we are not having Boston Market on Thursday. I can, yeah, I can definitely confirm there will be no Boston Market at my house. Because Rochester doesn't have one anymore. Yes, it does. It's Henrietta. It's Henrietta. Oh, really? Okay. Still, there's still one in Henrietta on Jefferson oh. right around the corner from uh, Henrietta Road. They don't let me over there. <laughs> okay. Why are you not allowed in Henrietta? He's been banned know. from Henrietta. So. Well, no, the east side. They let me in the east side to go to Nazareth last night for a concert. East side. But... Uh, uh, Henrietta's the south side, honey. Oh. See, that's why they don't let me over there. I don't even know where they are. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Now, my sister lives in Henrietta. I just didn't know Boston Market still existed. Yeah, it's on Jefferson Road, um, right down the street from Sticky Lips. I remember Kenny Rogers used to be over on Winton. Kenny Rogers chicken. Kenny place. Rogers roasters. Yeah. Yeah. I vaguely the one remember, on uh, Winton. I vaguely remember stuff like that. I'm looking at Philly like, what? It was <laughs> delicious. I remember hearing about it, but I don't think I've ever went there. That's a thing. See, the radio station used to be down the street from it back uh, in the mid-90s, so oh, we used okay. to go there for lunch every once in a while. Gotcha. Where was the radio station? It was, uh, you know, I could probably give you the, it was near like Jefferson and, and South Winton. Oh, okay, like up in that, that corner where like. There's a Tim Hortons and a funeral home. and I guess. Do you know where? Um, Bailey uh, Cadillac is across the yes, street. Yes, exactly. Yes. Oh, wow. Right okay. There. All right. Yep. I can I- kind of identify. I think um, uh, Service Land or something was over there, which was a computer type store. Vaguely remember that. But Kenny yeah. Rogers was there. Michelle worked there. So Thanksgiving Day is coming up. It is coming up. It's tomorrow. Is the day of this of the release? <laughs> I'm not ready yet. My turkey's not defrosted. <laughs> As we're recording on Sunday. As we're recording on Sunday, but it's released on on Wednesday, so that's tomorrow. Yes, is our Thanksgiving day. Um, I've often talked about how Thanksgiving is my favorite day, but what do you guys think about? It? Is it just kind of like another day for you guys, or is it, do you find anything cool about it? No, I enjoy it. Uh, because I first of all get to sleep late. Yeah, and, and there's the, that. And the dinner isn't. <clears throat> excuse me. The dinner's not at my house. It's 
was at my mom's while she was still alive for many years, mm-hmm. and now my brother has Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, but the, the per- parade, watching it or at least having it on, is mm-hmm. sort of a tradition, and just sort of, and then. We go to my brother's house mm-hmm. and watch football and talk and eat and have hang out and it's just it's a nice day. Yeah, and I think and I've said this before. I think it's just why I enjoy it so much is that it, it's all of the good things of Christmas without the ridiculous parts of Christmas, the commercialization, the commercialization. The, you know, the yeah. stress about buying all this extra stuff and you know all of the the extra things you have to do and and, and the decorate and the, it's just basically everybody get together and just enjoy each other's company and take a moment to think about what. The past year has brought, and what you have, and you know, and and kind of just share that with folks. I just, I, there's just something about the sentimentality of it. I, mm-hmm. I just always truly enjoyed. I, I just the 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 downfall. The only downfall to Thanksgiving mm-hmm. is you spend hours and yeah. hours upon hours prepping <clears throat> the meal, dirtying every single freaking dish in the house. That and, meal lasts ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> And it's over quick. necessarily. <laughs> well, half you an might hour. Sit at the table and linger, but uh, yeah, that that's that that's the only kind of downfall is that you're you're spending mm-hmm. all this time prepping, and then all of a sudden, like people scatter to like the four winds after. Thinking. But that's part of the fun for me is actually preparing everything. You know, well, going through the motions the, with the, the bird. Preparing wasn't it wasn't a bad thing. It was uh-huh. just that that seems to all. Well, it's not the preparing; it's the dirty dishes afterwards. <laughs> I have gotten to the. So point... I have slave labor. I mean, kids. <laughs> <laughs> over the la- over the last so many years, um, mm-hmm. we've opted to whole host Thanksgiving at our house. We used to go back and forth between our house and my mom's house, and our house and my mom's house, and things like that. And just with the kids, it's just easier um, to host at my house because if Tyler gets Tyler, my oldest one, if he gets overwhelmed or whatever. He can go up and chill out in his room, mm-hmm. whereas my mom's house. Um, he's got nowhere to go. He, I mean, he, he's like it, it's one of those better homes and gardens houses where everything is in its place and you, it's, you can't sort of it, be. It, it, I mean, you could like crash on the couch yeah. in the den type thing, but he can't really get away from his brother if his brother's mm-hmm. bothering him and things like that. And it's and it's not his. So we've just decided that. It's easier for all and more Thanksgiving's comfortable. Thanksgiving's your holiday. Thanksgiving's yeah. at our house and mm-hmm. our holiday. Um, Randy or my mo- my mother in law are the ones that will prepare the turkey because mm-hmm. I won't touch it. Why I'll not? Do, I'll do everything else. It's slimy. It's disgusting. Oh, I cannot handle. It's, it's just a thing. I that sort I am, of get it. I am to be honest sque- with you. so squeamish about getting the stuff out of the bird and touching it. I don't even like touching chicken or steak or whatever. It's just. It's just a total turnoff. I'll cook. I really will cook, but it's just... There are days you're the ultimate badass, and then there are days you are absolutely so stereotypically girly. It's hilarious. I, and it's usually over something that it's bloody and slimy, and mm-hmm. and like there's times where like I would use gloves to put on because I mm-hmm. just can't handle the, well, t- can the, the touching of my skin, but I'm just like... But as Billy says, I'm usually sleeping before, mm-hmm. while the turkey, turkey's being prepped. And like I said, Thanksgiving's <laughs> not... Our holiday uh, to cook. E- Easter is mine and Susan's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My sister does Christmas Eve. My brother does Thanksgiving. So mm-hmm. we're all at his house. But getting up <laughs> late, it, there's a special feeling to the day in my brain. Mm-hmm. But it, like you said, it's not as overwhelming as Christmas. Mm-hmm. Or no, as Christmas used to be when we were little kids. But it just, it, I, I like Thanksgiving. Plus the eating. I'm a big Uh fan of eating. Earth tones, man. Earth tones on my plate. Life is good. Oh, neutrals. Yeah. This is pretty much the only time of year that I like turkey. Like, yeah, we I, don't yeah. have turkey. I don't, yeah, I mean, don't do it much. I know, that. like people like um, like uh, turkey cold cuts and turkey yeah. sandwiches, which I'll and do from like time that. to time. Yeah. But that that's something yeah. that's not a deli we meat. Don't that normally, I'll, I'll, yeah. but turkey like. Once at Thanksgiving, and then I know we have a coupon to get uh, another turkey if mm-hmm. you spend fifteen dollars or whatever that Evan gave us. But Randy's like, "Well, I had uh, if you spend twenty five dollars, the turkey was like whatever cents a pound, so he mm-hmm. was already spending twenty five dollars." So sometime we might do another turkey dinner on one of our Sunday gaming. A friendsgiving. Days. A friendsgiving, yeah. but which is a new term of recent years. But this is really the only time I like turkey. Mm-hmm. But then, like, 
because growing up, we would have turkey on Thanksgiving because we would go to a family's house or whatever. And then my mom would always cook a turkey mm-hmm. on Black Friday I, to have at home, to have those leftovers, to do hot turkey sandwiches with bread and yeah, gravy my mom, and stuff. Yeah, my mom and always like, made an oh, extra turkey. I can't do that. Because food touches. Food touches. And, and I was going to add, that was, gonna, that was about to be my follow-up like question, yeah. is how do you handle Thanksgiving with, with food touching all now, over the, the place? there's things, because you, you've been at my house enough, and you've... <laughs> seen me eat enough that I kind of section my plate where there's where you probably could put chopsticks or something in between it so it doesn't <laughs> touch but I uh, really love those divided plates. This is this is why she and I, <laughs> oh, I need, who have been best friends the forever veg- and a day, the vegetable, you know, those veggie trays yeah, that the Tupperware with- has all the little containers. That is my Thanksgiving plate. <laughs> this this is, she and I have been best friends for forever and a day, Billy. This is 94. right here. This is one of those reasons why she and I would never be able to live together <laughs> as a couple because she would do that and I would mock her. Re- mercilessly, and she would end up kicking my ass out the door. That'd be it. It'd be over. She would never be able to, because I just, because I just, I look at how you yeah. behave on this one. I'm like, what are you doing? Is it's just it's, what my, are you I'm doing? wired that way. I'm just like D W from the Arthur Show. Things can't touch and whatever. So. My my family would mock you till you cried. Oh and you know what? God. And I'm, that's that's okay because there are more people out there like me where food can't and I, touch. And I know I'm I'm about to get hit by people who listen to the show <laughs> for, for mocking somebody get with with, with basically a, a, a mental issue. Oh, here. I, I <laughs> have my own. Fuck you. <laughs> I, I have my own things, but to me that one is, is really. I'm just saying. I, I'm, a I'm, mental I'm, issue. I'm just saying. There's there's something wired wrong, kiddo. There's something wired wrong. It's I, hilarious and, uh, to me. Though. To me, it kind of is. I but, liked you, but it's for What's real. That? I liked you. You liked me past tense. I, I, <laughs> I have my own OCD issues, and uh-huh. oh, I do too. Hi, Billy. Yeah. Hi. I just want to make it very clear that this is. But just, this is still a funny one. Oh, this is still funny. But and, and Tanya is. Tanya. I want to make this very clear that my back is to him now, and I am <laughs> looking at Billy. My back is yeah. turned to him. You know about that? You thought that you weren't going to die this afternoon. You know, afternoon? You know what's funny is that you're you, going to die. You, you take a lot of shots at me too. <laughs> I want to. I want to point that out that you take a lot of shots at me. So. You know, That's why I can laugh about this. Buck up, Buttercup. That's all. Like, <laughs> okay, Sean. Princess Buttercup over there. <laughs> uh, no, she so, has she has turned back towards me, dear listener. She's actually holding my hand because because yeah, she because she loves me. Only in your dreams. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so um, getting back to Thanksgiving. And you see, she's turning that lovely shade of pink yeah. now. It's kind of cute. I'm laughing too hard. No, so. You're an ass. Yeah, You're you totally know. an ass. Yes, that's true. I've heard no, it. No, so we cook at um, our house. So this year my mom's like, what are we doing? How are we doing this? Whatever. And it, it was just- Ooh, three musketeers. Um, th- November was just so, so busy. A couple weeks ago when we were recording, um, I got the news that my grandmother right. passed away. Mm-hmm. So um, then last week was her funeral. So like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, leading up to it and things like that. And then- um, getting ready to record for today you're like when, when do you want to watch the boys i'm like well monday i have dance tuesday I have, i'm like i could do it tuesday because wednesday we have trivia night thursday i have gaming friday i have this saturday with this and chris is like um that's not gonna work because <laughs> it's like trying to co um yeah just... mesh our two schedules was not working so finally my mom on uh friday's like what are we doing for thanksgiving do you guys even have a turkey i'm like "Ooh, no <laughs> No, I don't. So I left the grocery list for Randy. I'm like, you need to get a turkey and you need to get rolls. That's all you have to get because my mom's doing bringing the potatoes. She's bringing the butternut squash. She's bringing the stuff for the stuffing. Or you could have a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Oh, I could. Oh, my God. I would love the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. I want popcorn. Mm -hmm. I want jelly beans. Toast. I want toast. I like toast. Well, the toast is the stuffing. I'll eat the the toast because I don't like stuffing. Mm -hmm. So I'll have toast. I don't like stuffing. I don't like the. I don't like out. stuffing either. To really? be honest with you, yeah. Well, more you. for me. Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely, definitely more. For I, I've you. never liked stuffing. Definitely more for me. I, you know, I used to like when we had everyone like, else does stuffed and, pork chops yeah. or whatever. But I mm-hmm. no, I'm not a stuffing Maybe person. Maybe some of the um, wild. stuffing is like soggy. It it's, well, it's, it's not as prepared. Really. Right. So yeah. I don't know. It's just. But I'm like a potato. Mashed yeah, potatoes, mashed, mashed potatoes are, are like awesome. my top yeah. ones. 
Um, when well, we did Thanksgiving so many years ago, and it was for all of Randy's family, so there was probably about 10 to 12 people, mm-hmm. we did like 10 pounds of mashed potatoes. And I don't think we had like a half a pound left as leftovers because that's how many... My son Tyler loves mashed potatoes. Riker is not a big potato fan. You you make up for everybody though. Oh, I do. I can. You can make ten pounds of mashed potatoes. Tanya will be happy. She'll oh, take that all to herself. Potatoes are great. Oh, we no, made, I had made, made mashed potatoes a couple um, like a week ago mm-hmm. for last Sunday for dinner. Mm-hmm. I did my container of lunch for Monday. Mm-hmm. I had my chicken and my green beans in one. I had a small container of mashed potatoes that I was going to share with my coworker Anita. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I get to work the next day. I'm starting to prep my lunch. I open the container. There's two big sco- spoons taken out of that container Mm -hmm. and i'm like son of a bitch i'm gonna kill him tyler got to it at like midnight (laughs) the night before i'm eating my mom's lunch and he didn't know it was my lunch because there was a pyrex bowl that was like this big Mm -hmm. in the fridge that had the rest of the mashed potatoes this one was a container like this and he goes well you didn't eat all those carbs i'm like oh (laughs) you're gonna die type thing and he's like he's been taking some liberties with how he talks to you lately i've noticed oh and but then he's like we're working on homework or whatever and he's mm-hmm. whatever and he comes in he goes puts his arms around me he goes i love you mom yeah I'm what, like, do you what do you want <laughs> what do you want it's the big bowl of mashed potatoes yeah it's the big bowl he goes you didn't need all those carbs i'm looking out for your health i'm like uh-huh yeah. okay uh-huh but there was more in the other one yes mashed potatoes and me although uh Pretty much any type of potato except for twice baked, I love. <coughs> now, are you um, guys venturing out on Black Friday at all? No. no. That that's unanimous. No. Last last I was reminded of this. I used to, like way back when. I think we no, talked never. about this yeah. a never. couple of weeks ago that we talked yeah, that I we used, used to before it became the Black insane Friday. Yeah. Black before Friday. Before Black that, Friday became Black Wednesday, <laughs> Black After Dinner Thursday, yeah. Black, Black Friday. Black Tuesday yeah. from the week I was before. Actually Cyber Monday, Small yeah. Business I, Saturday. I was at a Thanksgiving a couple of years ago where just as we were finishing up dinner and I was thinking about freaking oh, apple pie. Oh, you're going to snuggle in and start ha- talking with your cousin, right? Yeah, and uh, like a half a dozen people get up and they're like, oh, we're, we're, gonna go, we're going shopping. We got to go. We're going to go shopping. We're like, What? And my ex-wife's like, yep, let's go. Okay, let's go. I'll go with you. Sure. I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, so I ended up staying home, but I'm like, holy like, cow. I'm, I'll go up and play a World of Warcraft at this point because yeah. you guys are all doing whatever. It's crazy. But- I, I may stop at uh, Rhino's Comics. They're, I think they're doing like a local comic fry, comic shop. Oh, nice. Day thing, like well, nationwide. Cool. And mm-hmm. Record Archive has like a record store day Support type Support your thing. local folks. Absolutely. So I may do that just because I like comic books and records. Mm-hmm. And there'll be I, deals. But. Facebook memories reminded me about uh, three or four years ago. T- today, apparently, Thanksgiving landed on a, on this yeah. date, right? And so I, um, or no, Black Friday. And uh, my comment was, I saved thirteen hundred dollars on Black Friday. How I stayed the hell home. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Exactly. Here's my and, secret. And I stayed now, home. The whole thing of Amazon and online shopping yeah. and like the former Ebates, which is a new like rock. Uh, it's it's an app that starts with an R where you mm-hmm. get cash back depending on where you shop and things like that. You're not necessarily going to get those amazing, amazing deals except for the stress of trying to park and camp out and mm-hmm. be cold and whatever. I, I, but there's people that absolutely love it. Yeah. Think that they're going to mm-hmm. get the best deal ever. And they're going to walk out it. of uh, Best Buy with 14 large screen TVs. Yeah, I'm for like, sixty eight dollars each or something. Uh, I just I don't get. It. I mean that and that's see that's to me that's how this is all for Christmas, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And Christmas setup starts in October these days in many stores, and you know there's there's we talked about a couple weeks ago. There's already radio stations that are playing Christmas music 24-7. Head out in the hallway. You know, that's it. Head out in the hallway right now. Yep. And um, I think that makes it meaningless. Mm -hmm. It makes the whole thing meaningless to me. We're focusing on all the wrong things. That's why I enjoy Thanksgiving so much. Although I like most Christmas music better than most top 40 music right now, so. (laughs) That's fair. I'll still take the Christmas music. That's that's fair. I, (laughs) I, you know. But that's just me being a music snob. (laughs) I don't know. Well, anyway, happy Thanksgiving, Billy. Thank you, sir. Happy oh, Thanksgiving, way, Tanya. Oh, thank you. This happy is actually 
might be too late. I sometime this week it may have already happened mm-hmm. as of this Wednesday or maybe tonight where the movie theaters, the Fathom Events are doing Friendsgiving where they're showing all the uh Friends Thanksgiving episodes. Oh, wow. It's like six of them that they're going to show Okay, at the theater. That's cool. And Friendsgiving. And I, I think that's oh, kind of, if you're a Friends fan, I think that's a, kind of funny. It's a two-day event. Um, Yes, the 24th and 25th, so Sunday and Monday they're doing it. Oh, so. So when this drops on Wednesday, right. it's, it's already It's already passed. happened. Never mind. It's happening as we speak. <laughs> yes. I hope you got, you had fun if you went. Or, you know, if you're that much of a Friends fan. Rent the DVDs yeah. or find it streaming Netflix on it. Netflix it and watch all the Thanksgiving episodes. Now, we mentioned the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. We yes. did. How did all those kids wind up? Where were the parents? <laughs> Charlie Brown was supposed to go to his grandmother's. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Right. And um, he, he Peppermint gets a, Patty he gets invited. A from Peppermint Patty. Yeah, the, invites herself over, then brings Franklin and... Marcy. So, where were Franklin's parents? Where were Marcy's parents? Where were Peppermint Patty's family? I think the entire Peanuts gang were free-range kids, for the most part, because you rarely ever heard or saw parents, and when you did, it was always the muted trombone, and and it was the teacher. (laughs) And and if Charlie Brown is later going to his grandmother's, where where are his parents to uh, monitor the children's Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah. A, v- a viable question that will never be answered. No. Well, it was in the day and age where the, the kids were running around outside, and it was the not the helicopter parents. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I I grew up in that era. Right. And but so, still, if I invited six friends over for Thanksgiving, they'd be involved. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. How old is Charlie Brown? Um, The first Peanuts comic, I think. No, just like... Uh, Physically, how old would is I'd, he considered I'd put him in at there? Ten, yeah, ten. ten. I'd put him around ten. Fifth grade, fourth, yeah. fifth okay. grade, somewhere so in that area. Like, how old are they? Mm-hmm. I don't like. I don't. It's why I just read that they the Thanksgiving special came out in seventy three, yes. which I thought was earlier. Hmm. You know, which the first time I saw it would have been, I would have been eight, which nowadays is ancient. And no eight year old. I would have been one. Now. I wasn't watching it. But I and it Green. seemed like it'd been around longer than that. But still, seventy three is is good because the Christmas special. I remember looking 65. forward to it. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I remember that was like the sign that Thanksgiving was going to happen. Was yeah. Charlie Brown? You know, yes. exactly. same it, thing it with Christmas. Aired every year on CBS <laughs> from nineteen seventy three until nineteen eighty nine. It only it skipped eighty two, eighty three, and eighty eight. Um, then the Disney Channel and Nickelodeon revived the special for re-airing in the 90s. And then in 2001, it moved with all the rest of the Peanuts specials to ABC. Um, traditionally, ABC airs the special on Thanksgiving night, but it's also aired on various days in the week leading up to Thanksgiving. Now, we started um, watching this at fri- on Friday at work mm-hmm. um, through YouTube. I couldn't get the whole, I could have gotten the whole um, 37 minutes or whatever it was. But I would have had to pay like two dollars and ninety nine cents or four dollars. I wasn't willing to pay, so somebody had it in the different parts, like mm-hmm. chapter one, chapter two, chapter okay. three, chapter gotcha. four. So that's how we were watching it. And mm-hmm. um, in the twenty five minutes or so, we got through um, like seven parts of it. So like the kids are like, and, and the half of the kids are like, oh my god, Charlie Brown, stop! No, you should know that Lucy at this point is still gonna pull the football. Come on. He always holds that eternal hope that this is going to be the time. This time for sure. This time for sure. Because it is Thanksgiving, and we wouldn't do that to you on Thanksgiving. It's just like, no. You're such a blockhead. Yes. And and the kids are like, oh, my God. How how can Peppermint Patty just invite herself over? I'm like, kids nowadays still do that. Yeah. My son Riker invites himself over to people's friends, people's houses. Like, I'm going to be whatever. And then he's inside. And da, 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 da. And I'm just like, Riker, you can't do that. And I'm like, and, or he'll say, oh, so-and-so, we're, you can stay for pizza for dinner without checking with me first. And then things like, I'm just like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> like, oh. But <sighs> you're eh, tired. I am. I'm a little, a little tired, but that's okay. I'll be fine. Are you sure? No. No. I will be. Yeah. I'm practicing for my post-Thanksgiving dinner nap. Oh. That's Practice it. makes perfect. There you go. <laughs> Tanya's trying now. No, I'm not. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I had a twinge go down my back. Ooh, that's oh. no bueno. Uh, you all right? No. 
All right. Let's, I will be. We'll take a quick break, take a break so we can yeah. straighten. Yeah, we'll, so we can straighten Tanya out. We come oh. back. We'll talk about some events, and we have our question of the week. Oh, I better try and remember what that question was. I have to, also. Okay. Uh, let me find my comedy because uh, there's comedians here. I must have misplaced them. So let's just play some music. Up. And take a break. In the middle, a little bit. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Find music. Here we go. I'm bad at this. There we go. <laughs> about Thanksgiving, right? Ever since you're little, you've heard this. The pilgrims left England to escape religious persecution and to sneak religious freedom into the new world. <laughs> and even when you're little, you're like, um, bull <laughs> <laughs> You're just saying that, right? Because it sounds better than the truth. La, 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 la. It sounds better and it tastes better. So we'll all pretend it really happened. There were no women or minorities. Just a bunch of white guys wearing wigs. My feeling is the pilgrims were asked to leave England. England was never funner than when the pilgrims split, right? The people of England got a little tired of these dour, right-wing, conservative psycho-Christians wearing all black, bumming people out, confusing everyone by wearing buckles on their heads. <laughs> Finally, someone went, hey, I've got a crazy idea. Why don't you freaky little weirdos get in a rickety, leaky, dinky little boat and get off the island, huh? <laughs> Sail around till you hit the new world. When you get there, commit genocide on the indigenous people, all right? Have a groovy time. <laughs> Have a witch trial. Let us know how that works out for you. We'll be back in England having the Renaissance in case anyone needs us. So they send this group over, right? With guns and Bibles and no farming implements. Mm. How English is that? Oh, surely there'll be a shop open. I say, Squanto, can you make us some baked beans on toast? They send this group over, and then I have to hear this all the time in England. Well, all Americans are fat and stupid. <laughs> Really? Well, thanks for sending over the best and brightest to start the party, huh? <laughs> Maybe we could send a few freaky militia hate group gun-toting weirdos back to your country, huh? There we go, comedian. I want to say Greg that I Proops. heard this earlier that uh, last week. Really? That's that one? That particular one. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was on the morning or the afternoon, but I did hear this huh. thing about oh, on the radio. On the radio. I don't know. I missed you it. You guys didn't play it in the morning, did you? I don't remember playing it, no. That must and have I'm, been. And I'm in charge of the comedy in the morning. It had I might to have heard have it last the, year. It, mm -hmm. No, it, it was this past week that okay. I heard it. It must have been so in the you're afternoon. you listening to Thou That Shall Not Be Named. Because my radio is tuned to that from the morning. So okay, therefore, good. when I first get into my car in the afternoon, uh -huh. that's the station that's on before I start going like this. With okay. Everything. Well, I'll accept that. But in the future, when you get in your car, just go la 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 <laughs> la. But it was, but this comedy routine was going on, and I kind I had to laugh at it about that. that there's a shop open. There'll be a shop open. <laughs> hey, are, are I've you never seen me? Billy that, be petty before. It's that, awesome. That, that, that <laughs> afternoon one, I got journey tickets. Yeah, I did. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stop believing. <laughs> you said I should have gotten four. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh well. Oh, that, was, that made my day. Uh -huh. <laughs> That made, that made my day hey, right there. So we have events coming up. We do have events coming up. On December 7th and 8th, which will be next week. A day that will live in infamy. <laughs> Did we give up when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? The Germans? Don't, don't stop me. He's on a roll. 
<laughs> You've never seen Animal House. <laughs> We're going to have to not a book club Animal House now at this point. It has been years. Um, Mind I if can't... we dance with your dates? <laughs> um, t- <laughs> <laughs> and we Why broke. no? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> let's, let's keep going. December 7th and 8th at toga, the Grease Ridge toga, Center. Toga. <laughs> In the theater wing will be our annual mini con. Yay. Yes. Um, come down and get those last minute uh, gifts for the, the geeks and the nerds in your, your life. Because uh-huh. we shall inherit. Say hi to earth. us. Come say mm-hmm. hi to us. Please. We will have um, a children's carnival area. Um, and we will definitely have our cosplay contests and our children's cosplay parade. And we have Thor the Impala coming, um, mm-hmm. the replica from um, Baby from Supernatural. Right. We'll have a TARDIS for Courty photo of, ops. Courtier of Experience Entertainment. Entertainment. So I can't wait for that weekend. I know. I miss those guys, too. They're really yes. cool. So. I love Jim and Kim. They're awesome. Mm-hmm. Good folks. Bobby Ringer. Bobby Ringer. Bobby Ringer. Exactly. Yes. So, so come see us then. We'll have Moonlight and, on the Sand and Sunlight um, on the Sea. I believe December 11th, we mm-hmm. are back to having a game night. Yes, not trivia night. A game night. Game board You're game welcome, night. You're welcome, Peter. At uh, at the five eight five Rockin' a Burger Bar. Because his daughter's been asking when we're yeah, going to have a game thing. night. We're going to we're going to hook her up because yes. she asked nicely. Yep, she's been asking for like months. I know, and we've been shameful. Yes. So, so we're, we're going to get that. back to having game night once a month. Yes. So. And there you have it. Those are our awesome. events right now. And then it'll be Christmas season. And we've got some cool stuff coming up in the new year. So, what we'll be talking about that in a couple of weeks. And then we're going to take our Christmas break. Yes, yes. So we've we got two a, more episodes we need a after this one, break. <laughs> and then we're going to take our fall. We're going to take our mid-season break. So we'll we'll we're going to crash out the rest of 2019. And but we got a couple more Ring episodes to go. Mm-hmm. We got James Iris is going to be back in the studio next week, and then the week after that, we've got something a few things up our sleeve for the uh, the the mid-season finale. We're talking as it about were. the boys, right? Yep, the boys on Amazon Prime. Good. It'll give me a chance to start watching it. There you go. I th- I, I feel bad <laughs> doing. An episode about it before you've seen it. Even That's okay. You, you... I, yeah, it, it's okay. We can mm-hmm. spoil. It's okay. I will still go back and watch it. Okay, good. It might help me understand things just a little bit more. Right. Okay. Even if we spoil it, it's gonna. It, it's still I'm yet still gonna to watch see it. It's so well acted. And yeah. Written. It, it really it's been is. watched in my it's... house already by mm-hmm. my husband Randy, but I just mm-hmm. had come in and out and I was doing other things. So mm-hmm. like, it's got to be on like my time that I'm in the mood and mindset to watch it. Mm-hmm. Like I was the other night, I started it, and then I'm like, hmm, got distracted with other things, and then hmm. I just... Yeah, weren't ready for it. Wasn't ready to watch yeah. it. Yeah, so. and then there are days where there's things where... It happens. You have to be in mm-hmm. the right frame of mind for the right show. It's right. like when I was ready for Doctor Who or whatever, I binged it, mm-hmm. and I binged it. And it's mm-hmm. like when I wanted to watch NCIS, and it's like... That took I, you four years to binge that whole thing. Uh, uh, NCIS. She's, it she's took now me on episode six thousand nine hundred and forty-three. It took me one summer to get through all like thirteen seasons of it to be yeah. caught up to where it was or wherever how many seasons it. Gibbs was. is chasing down criminals on a walker. It's which I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen or which heard I'm behind of right now a Netflix show called BoJack Horseman, which you've talked about on several yeah. occasions. Didn't they just can't? It got canceled. It, it, I think. it just uh, its sixth season just dropped. Mm-hmm. I think it's its last season. Yeah. And when I read that, oh, let me go back and watch. I haven't watched it in a while. Where did I leave off? At the end of season three. Oh wow! So I've I haven't picked up on it in a while. And I started. I watched a few episodes yesterday, and oh, it is such the darkest show in the history of television. It makes the boys look like friends. Okay, and, but it is so funny. I will ha- definitely but have to you, sit down. And you catch have a couple to have episodes. mental issues to find this show funny so i obviously do <laughs> so that's something just... we have to look forward to in regards to bojack horseman oh, and man. the boys so i'll have things that i can the watch. boys Dark. is downright cheery compared to bojack horseman that's amazing that's amazing <laughs> so uh, all right what's our question of the week our question because i still didn't check what is the longest running in joke that oh, you have with good, friends or family one. and what's the story about behind it and it's honor of thanksgiving yeah in honor of thanksgiving what's the longest running in joke you have with friends or family and what's mm-hmm. the story behind it okay mm. uh, actually it's easy with me and it is a thanksgiving tradition and uh-huh. it will happen again this thursday even though I, I have a brother that lives here in Rochester and one that lives in Arizona. Okay. And many years ago, before he moved to Arizona, and it's probably been 25, 30 years now. Oh, wow. Okay. 25-ish. We were having dinner at my parents' house. My mom's 
my dad's been dead since 97, so before that. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner around the table. Mm-hmm. And, hey, will you pass me the gravy? And me and my brother went for the handoff, and we missed, and gravy <laughs> everywhere. everywhere. Oh, no. Oh, it was a disaster. <laughs> so now it's don't give Bill the gravy or yeah. don't give Ed the gravy. Oh, it's great. Even though Ed hasn't lived here in 25 <laughs> years, don't let Bill and Ed have the gravy yeah. because it'll be a disaster. It's a keep away. Yeah. That's funny. So well, now we're not allowed to have the gravy. Aw. Uh-huh. Well, can somebody we scoop do. it onto your plate yeah. for you? <laughs> we, we I, I am eventually a lot, but it's still, oh, oh, be careful with the gravy. And I'm sure Ed's One of those still, things, yeah. they just don't let you live that one down. Yeah. Oh, man. So I, I think in regards to me, it, the long, it's it's not like, an, it's probably an in-joke or whatever. But when I'm cooking or whatever and um, prepping for any gathering that would, um, I always inadvertently seem to burn myself, whether Uh-oh. whether that doesn't sound like a good no, tradition. No, well, but it's the thing. It's the joke is don't let Tanya near the stove or whatever because right. I will always inadvertently burn myself. I did it for uh, Tyler' birthday. I had made Tyler or Riker a grilled cheese. Then my parents came in with the cake, and I went to go check to see if the stove was still hot. Mm-hmm. Instead of just looking to see that the red light was still on there, I went like this, put my hand on the burner. Ah, so I put my hand on the burner. I have done that like at least 20 times in the last so many years. Um, or thing. helping to make gravy, I y- used the hot drippings from the gravy in our shake Tupperware shaker container, mm-hmm. and, you should u- and you should use cold water. Because the hot juices expanded and went, poof, and went all over the um, kitchen cabinets above oh where our kitchen window is. Yeah, and I had burn marks. And you got burned. I got burned all over my arms and things like that. And there was a Thanksgiving when Riker was a couple months old. Mm-hmm. I had burned myself, or I had burned myself, or whatever. Sure enough, it was Thanksgiving. They. Plopped me on the couch, put Riker in my hands, and said, "No, uh, uh, you're not coming in here because you have a tendency to burn yourself." And sure enough, that's not a so good tradition. That, but that, okay, that, that, that's the longest. Like, don't let. They're like, "What am I going to do?" To so there's going to be a picture of Tanya mm. sitting on the couch with two firefighters on either side of her. Uh, Join us after Thanksgiving when Tanya has half a head of are hair. Are they buff? I know. My are God. they buff? <laughs> you, you're gonna I, you're gonna get whatever was available at the moment. <laughs> Wonderful, have maybe. you seen the Rochester Fire Department? Those uh, guys are cool. Calendar that I, they I, have. I, I Ooh, know a lot of man. firemen. My brother was a retired Rochester City fireman. Can, I don't know where they found these guys. Not a lot I don't of know. But did buff. you see that picture? The, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 don't, don't, I don't know those guys. I don't know. But I bowl with a bunch of guys damn. that look like me and my brother. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know where they found them either. But damn, Ann and I were like, whoo, hello. <sighs> we need a fire extinguisher over here. Okay. Well, there's one in the <laughs> office somewhere. You know. <laughs> So, Chris. Yes. What was the longest running in joke you've had with friends and family? What's the story behind it? All right. Well, does it involve a toga? No, it could. Several years ago, uh, when my ex was working for Century Safe out in wherever, it's, I can't remember if it's a Fairport or Webster, but um, the family that owned it at the time made sure that every employee of the company had a turkey for Thanksgiving. And they would wheel up the truck and they would distribute those. And so, about a about a week before Thanksgiving, the truck pulls up and Erica gets out of her. And she's like, what's going on? She had no idea because she would not been with the company that long. So she didn't hear about the tradition. So she goes out and they present her with the turkey. And she's like, oh, cool. Oh, this is really cool. And she, she brought it home and she put it on the kitchen table and she tells me what happened. And then she goes, I go, okay, cool. So now what? She goes, I have no idea. We'd never made a Thanksgiving dinner before. We'd never done a turkey before. So we're like, well, we should try this out. And we'll play because we already knew we were going to be having dinner at a family house, but we could make a turkey, you know, try it out, see what happened. You know, maybe we could host Thanksgiving next year. So we unwrap it and, and she, of course, Googles, right? So she Googles everything. Well, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this. So I'm holding this freaking turkey in the kitchen sink while she's rubbing lemon all over it to disinfect it and whatnot. We're starting to do all this thing. And it was late at night. And of course, the weird things happen when I'm tired and it's late. So I'm holding this turkey up so she can rub it down with the, the lemon and the butter and whatnot. And then I just start kind of like bopping it around. <laughs> and she goes, what are you doing? I'm like, he wants to dance. Dance with the turkey. And then out of, for whatever reason, I said, dance with Howard. 
I don't know why I decided to name the turkey Howard, but it was a name that was on my mind at the moment. Dance with Howard. Howard the turkey wishes to dance with you. Right? We're not naming the turkey Howard. We're naming the turkey Howard. Come forth, children, and sample the Howard. Right? So that happened, and we're laughing our asses off. Um, you know, and, and so that was Howard the turkey. So next year rolls around. Again, she's still working for Century, so she gets a turkey. So we're like, okay, we're going to plan to have a dinner with friends and family. Um, well, what do we, and then of course I ask, what are we naming it this? We're not naming the turkey. I said, we're naming him Norbert this year. <laughs> so this suddenly became a thing and the kids latched onto it and Erica eventually gave in and, you know, so naming the turkey became a tradition. So we've had Norbert and Henry, uh, when the Pope passed away, we, in, in honor of the Pope, one turkey was named John Paul. Oh. Uh, Ian had, had done a, a whole book report on St. Christopher, who was based on apparently on a Greek figure named Repo- Reprobus. So we named a turkey Reprobus, Pedro, Pablo. There's been a long line of named turkeys. And my mother had kind of caught on to it. And, and so this year, as we're getting ready to, to do dinner, she goes, you're not naming the damn thing, are you? I said, Mom, please don't tell Charlton that you're not interested in having t- dinner with him. And she goes, I'm not naming the, I'm not talking about Char- well, Charlton. Where the hell are you get? I'm like, well, it's Carlton, but cooler. Okay. You know? So, it's just like- so this year's turkey is Charlton. Charlton. Okay. Charlton Heston. But anyway, um, I don't know why, but it's, it's it's just the thing that happens. You have to name the turkey in our family. So there you have it. That's the tradition. Did you know enough to like defrost it and take all the stuff oh, out yeah. of the inside yeah, no, we, and we, things we've like We've never had a problem with that. We've always figured that was there was a, a thing. And it, you know when, when my ex-wife and I were together, we had a, a mantra when it came to cooking. If it moved, marinate it. <laughs> right? So if it was something that moved... In its previous form, marinate it. So we had this whole kind of like tradition of, you know, rubbing it down and making sure it was in oils and whatnot. So it was like brining the turkey in a, in, a, in a way, but we did it in our own way. And so we would always kind of like wrap it up in tin foil and let it sit on the front porch for a couple of days. And then, boom, we're ready to go. So, nice. yeah, prepping the turkey is kind of part of the fun for me. So, but that sounds like we've done enough show for turkey today. cannot be taught. Sure. It would say, so come dance with Howard. Anyway, uh, so with that being said, I think we're done for this week. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow. Maybe your turkey's named Howard. Yes. If you yeah. name your turkey, please let Chris know what it is. Yes, absolutely. If you name the turkey, I want to hear about it. Absolutely. Maybe it'll be named Chris. And and you know, if you're that person that we referred to earlier that you're listening to this particular episode in 2093, feel free to not let us know because we won't be around to hear it. But but by name then, the turkey anyway. By then the turkey have roomed have ruled the, the earth. turkeys are roaming the earth they're naming us that's it they're naming us now at that point they're marinating us because we moved in a previous there we go <laughs> this has been monkey business a product of the mighty monkey corporation purveyors and producers of the flower city comic-con coming at you like a spider turkey in may of 2020 eh. follow us on fa- yeah, i don't know follow us on facebook follow us on instagram follow us on twitter follow us wherever we go and we lead you to where the entertainment is. Everybody have a great holiday, a safe holiday, and we'll see you all again next week. Happy Turkey Day. Yay! Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> We're definitely having madness today.